I, w I was invited by the Oxford University to um, to sort of make something to mark the the, the event of the 2012 transit of Venus, um, and it kind of snowballed into a much bigger thing than they imagined. I, I decided very early on that I'd like to go and film the transit of Venus, um, so it meant that this thing that I think they thought would happen on the day couldn't happen until much later. So. It became a big, um, yeah, a big undertaking. The enthusiastic attempts in 1874 and 1882 to use observations of the transit of Venus across the Sun to refine the measurement of the mean Earth-Sun distance, the so-called astronomical unit, are perhaps best known for the international nature of this vast collaborative undertaking and, in turn, for their inaccuracies and ultimate failure. What is, however, less well known is that cinema, in part, is the illegitimate child of those 19th century scientific exertions. In 1874, when there was um, a transit, uh, it was really the first moment that, that photography was a kind of possibility, a tool for, for the observations of the transit. And, um, there was a lot of skepticism in the world of science um, in relation to whether that was a sort of, um, uh, yeah, a viable um, tool for, for their observations. But there was one particular scientist, Jules Janssen, a French astronomer who was really a pioneer of the use of photography in science. He'd made these amazing images of sunspots uh, with, with, with um, photography and he kind of came up with this idea of creating a chronophotographic device, a revolver that would hopefully make the observations more precise by allowing you to sort of retrospectively make a decision about the beginning and the end of the, the transit, these kind of two critical moments. So, yeah, it was just this kind of, I suppose, um, he, he was just a scientist who, who he really could sort of seemingly, I don't know, um, think in a very independent way and, and um, sort of put these things together, chronometry, photography. It was prompted by this phenomena, the black drop, which was this strange moment of distortion in your perception of the shape of Venus across the edge of the sun. This had been a constant problem for previous observations of the transit of Venus. This moment of informational slippage, if you like, a kind of indecision about when to start the clock on the transit. And he put those things together. It never really worked, actually, but um, it, of course, led to many other things. While Janssen famously claimed that photographs would become the retina of the scientist, there were many who warned against cinematographic techniques, the most influential of whom was the philosopher and critic Henry Bergson, who demanded that the scientific establishment set aside such strategies. Bergson argued that it was not only Venus's form, plagued as it was by the black drop that was elusive, but all forms. He suggested instead that there is no form, since form is immobile and reality is movement. What is real, he insisted, is the continual change of form, form being only a snapshot view of transition. His kind of criticism is, is at the heart of everything in the, in the film, in a way. This kind of, because it's a, it's a film about the black drop phenomena, but it's also a film about more generally about, about the way, <clears throat> sort of, I don't know, his, history is, is, is recorded and, and um, the way that certain kind of subjectivities and, and, um, and, and kind of misunderstandings and um, sort of what we call in Britain sort of Chinese whispers, um, sort of slippage in a way that, that ha has, has played such a part in, 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 in sort of evolving ideas about science, but also about, yeah, about history. So you have these very specific um, uh, examples of Naismith and Carpenter photographs, supposedly of the surface of the moon, which of course were made in their back garden in Kent, uh, having made observations of the moon through a telescope, and then some drawings, and then some models, and then photographs of those models. They com completely misunderstood what they were looking at, and, and, and yet sort of presented these, 
these photographs as, you know, scientific fact information. And the other sort of very clear example in the film is this portrayal of Captain Cook's death linked very much to the transit of Venus through his travels to the South Pacific. And again, there were these ship's artists who made the sort of original drawings of this event, hadn't even witnessed the event and made the drawings based on accounts from different people on, on board who were there. It became an incredibly sort of iconic sort of media image at that time. And many people made versions of this which um, portray very different sort of um, uh, takes on the story, if you like. And so that, that was again another example of, so, so the, in a way the black drop phenomena, this very simple distortion becomes a sort of, I don't know, like a model or metaphor for all of those other distortions that are happening. And also through the portrayal of this editor trying to piece together this narrative, um, this rather complex narrative, he is sort of also implicated in that, in that sort of process.